1971, Lu Guizhen wrote an essay on the inner elixir, a Taoist physiology that could be applied to reverse the state of aging tissues. Lu explained that this technique was physiological through and through, not to be confused with the spiritual alchemy of the West. But as we uncover drafts of the inner elixir, we discover that Lu had censored her own ambivalence towards this inner alchemy. Was her hesitation in her work a reflection of a kind of ambiguity in her own way of being? Did it have anything to do with her illness two years earlier? One morning in 1969, a nurse injected atropine into Lu Guizhen's neck to keep her from salivating. As Guizhen waited outside the operation room, a doctor approached her, asking if he could delay her appointment. Alone and hungry with a desiccated mouth, Guizhen waited anxiously for two more hours before the nurses finally returned to inject another dose of atropine into her neck and wheel her back to the operation room, where doctors inserted a tube down her throat and discovered an invasive tumor in her left lung. Dago Joseph, all has not gone well this morning. I'm still in the white robe for the This was no place for discussing a Taoist understanding of the body, no reason for explaining the inner elixir, and no place for practicing acupuncture. Guijin, draped in a white hospital gown, was thoroughly embedded within a biomedical context. And as the nurse punctured Guijin's neck to deposit atropine, the needle functioned as a vessel to transfer fluid that would inactivate local neurotransmitters, serving a much different purpose from the acupuncture needles that Guizhen studied. Here is how the atropine works. Nerve agents knock out the relaxing cholinesterase, causing the acetylcholine to build up until it paralyzes the muscle. Her body had been altered to an abnormal state in preparation for investigating an abnormal growth inside of her. And although she had been ill, it was the effect of the atropine, and not her own disease, that caused her to suffer. The fearless Guizhen, who had been fiercely independent, was frightened and alone. While Lu later described the inner elixir as a triumph of man's mastery over his own fate, it was nevertheless a medieval pursuit. How did she understand the decay of her own self? Had the strangeness of her own biomedical body distanced her even further from understanding the strangeness of a Chinese medical body?